welcome today our, our first guest on Community Conversations, our, our Friday kind of lunch break series that we're going to do to, to um, talk with different people in our communities. Um, our first guest is Maury Enders with the Lincoln Community Playhouse. Welcome, Maury. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the theater. Yay. We're so glad to have you on. Um, and uh, usually there's more, usually there's more people. Yeah, <laughs> there's more people usually. Yes, that's totally true. All right. So yeah, usually there's more people here. Thanks for being here today. Um, Maury, let's talk about how has, um, like, what is the Lincoln Community Playhouse? Well, the Lincoln Community Playhouse is about ready to enter its 75th season. So we've been around a really long time. We started life um, as a little group of people who sat in a circle and read a play together. And so they called themselves the Circlet Theater. Then it soon became the Lincoln Community Playhouse. And uh, um, our first productions were done in a bathhouse. I, I think it's weird, but you know, it's a little trivia. We started in a bathhouse. Then we moved to the old synagogue. And then in 1972, we moved to this building, which is on the kind of the corner of 56th and Normal. We're right next to Gear Library. So we are a theater that, that is community theater. We have a professional staff. We also hire in professionals that do uh, directing, designing, choreographing, um, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, but we are here are just folks who just wanna come and participate in theater. We have a year round schedule. So we, we, one season moves into the next without really a break. So we have five professional staff people here um, and then like a lot of other people. So hundreds of people coming through our doors to participate in the theater. That's awesome. Um, so a month ago, you guys were um, in the middle of your regular season. Um, what happened? <laughs> Tell us about the pandemic and what happened with you guys. Well, yeah, we lost the whole end of our 74th season. So we had to cancel a production of um, our Ollie Radioact our Ollie Playhouse Radioactive Players, which is our seniors group. We were about two, way, two weeks away from uh, opening our production of the Pirates of Penzance. We also had to cancel our Penguin Project production of Willy Wonka. We were Oh, a, a couple of months, a month and a half into rehearsal for that. And then we also had to cancel our final production of this, uh, our fine, another production of the season, which was uh, Matilda. Um, we, when, when this first started coming, we were trying to do like everybody else was all sorts of gymnastics about how you can do this and that. How can we keep rehearsals going while we're while doing them online? Um, and you know, um, uh, uh, we had two of our three shows that I talked about. Uh, part of the virus. So we had Penguin Project, where many of the kids in our production have immune deficiencies, and uh, also our, our seniors in our Ollie show. So those were two shows that were target audiences for this virus. So they had to be cut um, uh, for safety of everybody involved. The Matilda production, we tried to see whether we could piece that together with some online rehearsals. Um, the problem with that is it's just huge. Large. One um, second. You know, you have to see. Can, oh, you, I mean, can you go back? Me? Can you go back like uh, 30 seconds? What? So uh, you cut out a little bit. Oh, and that's, sorry. No, that's okay. That's, that's probably just what's happening right now. I'm gesticulating too much. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. This is this is the new normal right now. It's technology issues sometimes, so that's okay. So um, you have a lot of um, like let let's start from Penguin Project and Ollie again and um, immunodeficiencies, if that's okay. Okay. So sure. So those were those uh, Penguin Project and the Ollie show were target uh, audiences for the the virus so uh, kids who have some immune deficiencies senior citizens so those two shows were going to have to be cut pretty quickly but um, the Matilda show we tried to see whether we could work our way through uh, uh, internet rehearsals but it's a very complicated show with many multiple moving parts 
and and we just didn't see how that was going to really work. Um, we had planned at one time for some rehearsals with uh, the dance, uh, the choreographer, some of the dance. She does a lot of that kind of dance, distance learning with dance. Um, and we had Christine Cottom, who is the director of operations here at the theater. We had gotten the whiteboard out and we did uh, phase plan A, plan B, how we going to do these things. And we got all that done. And then the governor said, no meetings of 10 or more people. So that kind of, we kind of went, lost plan A, lost plan B, and went to plan C, which was, uh-oh, we're in trouble. So, um, uh, but with all the, and then, and then it was, the, the, the way that they scheduled, it was like eight weeks out or whatever, I think it was, which would have put us into the third weekend of performances of the Matilda production. So then how do we do that? We thought we couldn't, so we had to cancel that one, unfortunately, as well. So we kind of lost, whoosh, the whole end of our season. And then in June, we were going to have our, our one of our big fundraisers. It was a, a reversion, a redo of Party with the Playhouse called 75 exclamation point to kind of usher us into season 75. Didn't think many people were gonna have uh, gala fundraisers on their mind in June. So that also got postponed. So we kind of went from, you know, driving 60 miles or 80 miles an hour to like stalled in a second. Right. Um, so, uh, what what exactly does it mean to be a community theater, and and you know what is the importance of it, and then um, why is why is the current situation make it so much more challenging that you guys aren't able to operate? Well, the real like normal. you know. I think that theater is primal activity because we're storytellers, all right? So we are the only creature on the planet that tells stories, that makes up stories and tells them to each other. Other animals play. I mean, you've seen dogs play. I've seen you know, uh, monkeys in the zoo play. Um, but they don't, they don't say, hey, sit down. I'm going to tell you what happened yesterday and, and reenact it, right? They just don't do that. But sometimes first caveman came back from the hunt and said, boy, you should have seen what happened today and stood up around the campfire and recreated it. Something in our human gene pool went, oh, I really like that. And we've responded to that through all of history. So to suddenly have that pulled out from under us is, is going to be a, a stressor for who we are as human beings. So I love that we have, we're having this ability to talk to each other from different parts of the city. It's not the same as being in the same room together. I actually love binging on the television, watching Netflix series. And, but you know, it's not the same thing as, as being in a room watching live people do things and, and having people record songs and it's all great. It's not the same as being in a room sharing the same space while we sing, while we act together, while we encourage each other. Um, I like to say that at, at the Playhouse, we're in the people business. We just happen to be doing theater. That's the way, that's our venue to be in the people business. So to, to suddenly have a, have a building that's usually filled with people. I mean, we had, before we were shut down that week, actually, we had, I think, over 180 people doing theater, creating theater. That didn't even count the audience members of our last show the Sunshine Boys before we had to close. The, just the people doing 180 people coming through here multiple times in the week. So um, that's such a human need that is currently not being fulfilled. We're sustaining contact, but we're not really fulfilling contact. So I think that that is um, at the essence of who we are as people, and which is why the theater will always survive why the theater survived the advent of radio and t movies and talking movies and television and the internet. I mean, we still have theater. We still have people who make a plan to come to a space. They get in their car, drive here, watch a show, enjoy it with other human beings and go back. And they just don't sit at home. Why, do they not, why don't they just sit at home? Because it's not the same. There's been studies that show uh, you know, they wire people up, right? You know, all the electrode things. And they have them watch a movie and then they have them sit in an audience and watch a play. 
And when you watch a movie, the dynamic is between you and the screen. It goes like this. When you watch a theater, and I think it's because there's live people, it goes like this. All right? Or whatever, that instinct is not just going to the screen and you're a solo person, you're in a group. And we love being in groups. <laughs> so this is a great thing. That's, that's why, that's why that's why it's rough right now, and it's going to get rougher as the weeks go on. But also why we are here, I think we're, in, I, I think we're going to be part of, what, of the recovery business over all of this. So, yeah, that's, that's my next question. And is, let me yeah, go ahead. Well, okay, so when I first arrived here in 2010, I met with Phil Heckman, who is one of the wisest people I've ever met. All right, so he said, we, we, at that time, the Playhouse was struggling. Now we're doing really well, except no one's here. But, you know, um, uh, so he said, he says, here's how you do this. Here's how you bring the Playhouse to be a stronger group. He put a dot, and he said, that's the Playhouse. And then he drew little circles around it. And as each circle went around it, it got wider and bigger and wider. And he said, you, you're trying to bring the Playhouse back. You have to bring the Playhouse back by going to that first circle. Those are the people who are still most involved. When you re-engage them, then you can move on to the next circle, and then the next circle, and the broader circle, right? So that's what we did, and, and we brought the playoffs really back, and it's a, we're, we're, I think we're a vital citizen, we're a, uh, we're a good corporate business, we're a good corporate citizen of the community, and also we are part of the heart and soul of fabric of the community. But, so now we have this COVID crisis, so what do we do? We followed the Phil Heckman model, so here's the playhouse, What's the first circle? The first people we really have to take care of is the theater family, the people who are most involved with the Playhouse, right? Who does that include in that circle? It includes the, the groups that were already here, our senior group, our Penguin group, our Matilda group, our actors, our, our, our backstage folks, our front of house people, our season ticket holders, all right? Then, so, we, so what do we do for this group? Okay, so for that group, we started our Penguin Project, meet every Thursday through the internet. They sing and dance together, Don't Stop Believing, which is the theme song. Our Ollie group is communicated to every week by a newsletter uh, to talk to them. They, uh, um, one of our people, Joan Hudson, coordinates that, and she sends out videos and things. Uh, in, uh, in order to help the actors get through this, we invited them to, to record themselves singing songs. One of our uh, actors juggled fire. Um, don't do that at home. He's a professional, but he did. He juggled fire and we do the hashtag hashtag LCP connect. So that goes up on Facebook. And then if anybody now after this is done wants to type in hashtag LCP connect, you'll see a bunch of our actors performing. Um, we have um, done video tours of the Playhouse to help our audience members stay engaged and see part of the playhouse that they've never seen before. So we're up in the light booth, we're in costume alley, we demonstrated our fly system to keep those, um, you know, a, a program with our seamstresses to sew masks. And we're, we're first bringing those out, again, here's the dot, we're first offering those out to that immediate group so our penguin and our seniors are getting the first crack at, at getting the masks, and then we can expand from there. So now, so we've done that, that first circle. Now we're starting to move out into our next circle. So one of the things that we're going to introduce soon is a, is a, a show called Together Again, a musical extravaganza. So this, this in, the, in the first uh, wave of this, went to that inner circle too, because we asked actors to put together songs that they wanted to sing when we were able to come back. So we're going to, when the, when the curtain comes up, the stage is going to be filled with our theater family. We're going to sing Seasons of Love from Rent. And then we're going to do all these different songs. And then at the closer, we're going to do You Will Be Found from Dear Evan Hansen. Uh, and it's going to be just great celebration of being able to have human connection again. Uh, but so, so that was in that inner circle. Now we move out a little bit and we're going to announce it to audience members in, a, in selling it as a gala that we can, they can come reserve a ticket for this, the first time we're able to all get back together. When will that be? Who knows? It's the first time I've ever offered a play without knowing when it's gonna be performed. 
but then we're going to have, uh, in addition to that gala, Friday night we'll have Saturday and Sunday performances so our audience members can start thinking about that, thinking past in the recovery phase of what we're going to do as human beings. One of the things we're going to have to do is get back together and enjoy ourselves again as community. So that's what we're working on, that thing. We're also got some business. You know, that's the cool part, the heart and soul part. We're also doing things like we have plans, like it's really cold in this theater right now because we shut down a lot of the power. To, and we, you know, everything's unplugged. Um, when we do a, come in and work a computer, we, sh we actually shut it off at night and don't leave it on. Um, so it's cold here, it's dark here. There's a lot of dark hallways. Um, those kind of things that you have to do to try to reduce all of the costs that you can possibly reduce. Um. Thank you. That, that is exactly what I was going to ask you is kind of like what you're doing now and then looking towards the future. So thank you. I do have an, uh, a question from one of our um, guests on here today that uh, asked, is Maury anticipating great plays being written about this event? Uh, yeah, actually, p playwrights are already writing great plays. Um, some playwrights are writing not so good plays about it already. Um, and they're being put online, um, that kind of thing. And so, so we're actually sorting through some of those right now. We're looking at uh, an online play that is going to be involved with some of our youth actors. And that should be going up in a couple of weeks. So we'll be able to do that. That was specifically written for an online cast. So um, those are kind of fun. Um, but as far as something uh, really deep and, and mythic about this experience, uh, those will come from our great playwrights who are going to take a little more time, I think, in putting it together. Right now, you're seeing plays that are more fun and frivolous and uh, trying to get us through it. Right. Um, so what do you think? How can Lincoln support the arts during this time? Um, is there anything we can do for the arts or are we kind of going to have to wait and see? Well, I think, I, I, here's how I feel about it. I think initially when people, uh, nonprofits that, that were not related to uh, health and human services, when, when people panicked and thought we have to send out donation letters, um, I think that that was a mistake. I, think, I actually think our goal, our goal was to, to keep connected. I mean, uh, if you got, you know, go, we're not just a business. We're a mission driven organization that has to operate on a business mode, but also on our mission mode. And our mission is to stay, is to foster human connection. So that was our first goal was to stay connected. We got to make sure people stay connected, even though they can't come here. And so we're trying, trying to do that. Um, everything, everybody's focused this is initially on the crisis, um, you know, the, 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 the illness and the death and then the economic toll, all of those things. Um, but that being said, you all know where your hearts are. So in addition to supporting those kind of missions to make sure that people are fed, to make sure that, that, that health workers are getting masks and all of that stuff, you also keep reminding yourself, you got to, here's the nugget. That's the crisis. We're in that, but there's going to be an, an after side of that. And so keep all of the organizations that you love in your heart as well, um, so that we are here for you when, when this thing is over. We're trying to keep here for you now, but as you know, I mean, I mean, it's not the same thing as being sitting here in these beautiful purple seats that people have purchased um, for us to keep going. Um, so that's what I, I think people have to keep that in mind. Um, it's going to be a long haul. Uh, you're going to see organizations like us have to do some counter punching uh, methods um, for maybe, you know, this whole season coming up, maybe even seasons. Like one of the things we're looking at right now, we haven't announced season 75 yet because we're not sure when it's going to start. So, you know, when, when opening night is usually sometime in September, but that means probably eight weeks before that, we've had auditions to rehearse the play. So if the deadlines, the, the, these kind of stay at home or self-isolate kind of guidelines keep getting extended, that pushes back the possibility. We have season 75 
and then we have season 75 2.0 and season 75 3.0 and we're waiting to tell everybody what season 75 is because we don't know which version of it it's going to be yet so um, but one of the things that people can do to help us and other organizations is yes donate you can go to our 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 lincolnplayhouse.com website you can donate you can um we're gonna as i said we're gonna soon be in, uh, uh revealing this uh together again concert that people can buy tickets for um so they can do that uh we have we're gonna have a, the season ticket will come eventually and when it comes buy one that will be very helpful um and then also give to lincoln day is coming up at the end of may and that is going to be a great fundraiser, I think, for all of us, because I'm hoping that by the end of May, people can go, okay, I see the light. I see the, the sunshine, you know, Annie says the sun will come out tomorrow. Well, maybe by then we will see that sun come out tomorrow. Uh, and so those are, those are things we're looking at. We're also doing things like we, we applied for our small business administration loan. We put that in. Um, those are some of the things you have to do. There's going to be money coming from the National Endowment for the Arts that comes to the Nebraska Arts Council that will hopefully come our way as well so that we can keep the building going, pay our expenses, and be here. Maury, you always have so much good stuff to say. I always love talking with you. Um, does anyone in our audience have any questions that they'd like to ask Maury? Feel free to put those in the chat or um, unmute yourself and, and ask him. While I wait, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask you, let's, let's talk about, we, we talked a little bit about um, what normal times look at like at the playhouse can you can you tell us um a little bit about what your favorite playhouse moments have been oh boy yeah well my favorite playhouse moments there's there's a ton of them and thanks for not asking my favorite because <laughs> there's lots of them and many of them involve things that you know people don't ever see uh you know one of my personal favorites um, that is meaningful is, you know, well, in, Lily, you, Lily works with the Penguin Project, and you know that there are moments where one of our artists will say something or do something that is like a miracle moment. And, and you know, one uh, artists who are nonverbal say something to you in a fully formed sentence, and you just go, boom! <laughs> and you know that that is coming from the fact that you are providing as the Playhouse and the Penguin Project an environment that is so comfortable and so nurturing that it is reaching around their difficulties and bringing them forward. And it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, one of my favorites is Jacob, who is, who is an actor who has autism. He's a high school student. Um, he was playing um, King Triton in The Little Mermaid. And it was his first night to put on his costume. And uh, I said, do you want your mom to come back and look at your costume? And he said, yes, I would like that. So we brought her back and I said, she was taking pictures. And I said, I said, Jacob, can I have my picture taken with you? And he said, yes. And so I stood next to him and he was you know, holding that trident thing, you know, that, that, that he does. And he goes, just a minute. And he moved the trident to his left hand so he could put his arm around me. And that's a kid who didn't do a whole lot of that and to be accepted that he would put his arm around me was just like awesome beyond belief awesome and and you know then in that same show in little mermaid um they, we had the two kids prince eric and ariel who had to dance together and i was trying to demonstrate how you waltz and so i took ariel and we were dancing around and somebody took a picture from the side it's one of my favorite pictures of all time because it's like how often do you how often do you get to dance with a mermaid so it's just this great great sweet moment so it's those kind of things that, that really are exciting. And I also love um, uh, in it, when, it, when you're doing a comedy, I love directing comedies and musicals, but mostly because I like to hear the audience interaction with the play. Um, and and uh, so I like to sit in the back and I wait for a, a great comic line or a piece of business that I know is gonna land. And I love to wait and I watch the audience and I call it crash test dummy laughing. 
because you watch a couple hundred people go ha 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 all at once and it's like crash test dummies and i just love that that that's really great too and i also love a lot of times um you know when they take surveys of what makes people afraid uh, uh, usually standing up in front of people and talking is number one or number two usually if it's flipped number one is usually going blind but number two then is standing up in front of people and talking so we we have people stand up in front of people and talk all the time and we have people who have never done that before stand up in front of people and talk all the time one of the great things is that that because we, we have such a, 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 a wide pool of people who are here i mean we literally can have people from age 8 to 88 in this building acting or working backstage in any given week but a lot of times the parents will come in and the parents are like i don't know i don't think my kid can do this but they wanted to try it okay and so a lot of times we'll cast them and and they're like stunned that oh my god my kid has to, all these lines to learn i'm like don't worry about all the lines the kids are the first people to learn their lines and then by the time we open they know everyone else's lines as well uh, but 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 i think the parents project that fear of standing up in front of people onto their children and then their children go up and do it and the parents are amazed i mean stunned i mean like stunned more than amazed they're stunned that their kid could do that and i think they're able to see their kid in a new light that the kid has risen to this challenge and had a victory in something that the parents are scared of doing and those kind of things are that's what makes it worth doing um, last question here, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, give us a teaser of a show in the 75th season. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I, I knew you couldn't. I thought I'd ask but, you anyways. <laughs> but, but we are, we are working on, on a video where I'm going to sing songs for a fake 75th season based on the fact that everyone's hair is getting too long. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Maury, for, for joining us on our first community conversations. This was the best. Um, it's nice to see your face. I haven't seen you in a while. And, and it's great to hear about the Playhouse and, and all the great things you guys are doing and planning for the future. So. Yeah.